Gilbert, President and CEO of Productive Corporation. Joined alongside me today, uh, virtually, technically, um, and emotionally, Pete Greco, <laughs> VP of Sales and Tech, also here at Productive. Today, we're going to talk about an easier and more powerful way to clean your endpoint. Now, we don't recommend taking a fire hose to your actual server or workstation. This is just for example, uh, kind of uh, illustration purposes only. But if you do, let us know how it goes because uh, we'd love to see pictures. Um, all righty. So our agenda for uh, today is uh, meet productive in one minute or less, and then we will get right into the C Cleaner demo. If you have done our events in the past, you know we are all about being relevant, real, and looking at the tech, and less about the fluff. To that end, um, we will meet productive in one minute, which is full of fluff, and then we will get it over to Pete Greco, who will deliver as he always does. So with that, who is Productive Corporation? Well, I'm glad you took the time to ask because Productive Corporation is a security and storage software expert for mid-sized companies. We have a dedicated staff that can help you with all of your technical and licensing needs and get you technical assistance right here. So you don't need to navigate the World Wide Web all by yourself. You just need to contact us. We also test, implement, and optimize the products that we sell. We do security assessments. We do penetration tests. We do gateway configuration and optimization. We do AV health checks. We also produce a lot of content for the mid-market. We do this. You can find it at ProductiveCorp.com backslash content or also on our YouTube channel. The bottom line is we have the resources to help you. Help at ProductiveCorp.com, 800-726-4099. Whether it's implementation assessment or licensing or optimization services, we are here to help. And one of the ways that we do that is by showing you the technology that we represent. We talk about things that we think make a difference in your environment. Today, that is C Cleaner Network Edition. The man who I announced at the top of the hour that's going to show you this is named Pete Greco. He's our VP of Sales and Tech and has implemented thousands of security projects and solved a lot of uh, painful issues for our customers as well as solving some of uh, our internal pain with uh, the technology that we deploy. And one of the ways he's done that is uh, by using a product called CCleaner Network Edition, right? Which is, uh, if you're one of one billion here, you have heard of this product or used it. But uh, really, today we're going to show you what is the centralized uh, user interface, how you can make it efficient by not having to touch individual machines, as well as technically being licensed correctly for a corporate environment. So Pete, are you ready to uh, giddy up and get this thing uh, rolling? I am ready to rock. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I turn this over to give a warm virtual round of applause to... Pete Greco. Pete? All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for hopping on with us. We will uh, do our best to make this a super quick yet informative event. Uh, as those questions pop up, make sure you chat those to Todd so that he can uh, introduce them into the uh, conversation. Um, so let's get started. Uh, got this installed on a Windows 7 uh, machine that is virtualized in our Hyper-V environment and uh, typically we would recommend that you put this on a uh, server grade machine and I'm talking about the management console here but uh, when we threw this up uh, Windows 7 was uh, all that I had available and uh, it's worked so great for me I've just never gotten around to moving it even though we've had other uh, other servers come available since so when you first get in here um, what you're going to be looking at is really kind of this getting started uh, area and I've got uh, some things that I can do here um, right browse the network and the host I can add uh, another network this is multi-tenancy so uh, I can have multiple domains uh, listed right here if I want I can check for software updates and I actually have some updates uh, to deploy I'm not going to do them during this demo but uh, definitely will want to be pushing these out uh, and a lot of what you're getting uh, in these updates 
are new paths for the cleaning, right? So as uh, Adobe comes out with a new version, uh, you know, Windows 10 is coming out uh, pretty soon. Uh, if you move up to Windows 10, uh, you go to the latest version of Adobe, chances are some of those temp files and, and some of that junk uh, that gets collected might have a slightly different path from what it did on Windows XP and Adobe 9 uh, or, uh, you know, Windows 8 and, uh, and Internet Explorer 10, uh, right? So a lot of different things that we're looking for there. From here, I can start pushing out these uh, updates right now. Rarely do I need to re-update the agent uh, as it exists on the endpoints, but if I need to, I can do it right from the right from the console here. So let's talk a little bit about how I actually use this product, um, right? And for the most part, I really don't do anything. I've got everything scheduled, um, so I can pay very little attention uh, to this product. But if I feel like I need to take action, I can hop into one of my machine groups here. And if I plus this out, you can actually see I've got a couple of subgroups here. I've got servers and I've got workstations. Um, I'll talk a little bit about why I have a group labeled SSD uh, as we uh, are going through this. And as I hop into these, I can start drilling down into a very specific machine. Here I'm actually looking at the defragler. I can look at the CCleaner or I can just see a summary of what's going on. And if I want to scan just a specific machine, I can. So if someone calls the help desk and says, uh, I have a specific machine that's running slow, so maybe it's Enrique, um, right? Or maybe I'm just doing my, my weekly or, or monthly duty. I can get the whole group. I'm going to go ahead and get this whole group here. I'm going to go to my CCleaner tab and actually had something that we triggered. So normally we'd have our analyze up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and do analyze now. And it's going to start this analysis, and it's going to be scanning against the rules that I've already configured. Now, maybe for a specific reason. There's something that I want to do differently just for today, right? I can, and I can hop in here and change from the default rules to custom rules, and I can now reconfigure what's going to get scanned. Now, if I just want this to be a one-time thing, just this one time, I want to clear DNS cache, uh, or I want to stop cleaning uh, DNS cache, or I want to add something here. Maybe I want to get rid of some of these image burn uh, cache files from when we burn CDs, uh, right? Or I want to clear some log me in uh, stuff from our join me session, uh, right? I can check and change these. If I do save now, this will become my new default scan set, um, or I can just do a new analyze against the rule set that I've that I've made differently. I'm not going to do anything, so I'm just going to change that back to default rules. I can also choose if I drill down to specific machines, uh, if I want to do all users, so all the profiles on that box, or just a specific profile. I don't know why you'd ever do a specific profile, but they give you that capability if you if you want to. The best thing is to clean all those profiles so you're getting the max the max cleaning. Now we actually have this set up to run every night. Um, we switched over to a lot of cloud-based and browser-based applications, and one of the things that we like to do is clear that browser cache uh, pretty frequently so that we're really getting a max uh, performance. And so you can see um, most of these boxes got cleaned um, just last night, probably at about 11.30. It's 11.09 Central Time now, so just 12 hours later, and we're already seeing some, some boxes with some uh, somewhat significant info, 25 meg on, on uh, Sublime, uh, 10 meg, 10 meg, uh, 2.2. Um, I got a new laptop recently. Um, used it for about a month before I got CCleaner installed. Uh, cleaned off about three gig uh, right off the right off the bat. So that initial so clean is going to be your yeah. So you're saying with these uh, hosted apps happening, right? A lot of people are bringing these environments, so they're just seeing we're seeing more and more kind of browser cache stuff get piled up more quickly. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if you've got uh, you know three, four, uh, five different things that you're using pretty regularly. You know, for us, it's our CRM, so that's up uh, all the time. Um, our email is in the cloud, so that's up all the time, um, right? We've got a, a each guy probably has some different stuff that he's doing. I've got a couple of support websites that I'm on uh, pretty much all day. Um, then I'm also pulling in uh, other internal things, Todd that are browser-based for management. So our Sophos UTM, for example, you manage it via a browser. Well, that's also creating some additional, you know, some additional cache information, uh, cookies, all kinds of stuff that ultimately 
just start slowing the machine down uh, little by little. Then you start mixing in uh, any time an app crashes on you, that's creating a, a memory dump or, or uh, uh, some kind of a temp file. Um, start doing patching. We see a huge amount of cleaning happen um, after we do uh, our patch run at the beginning of the month, um, right? And so uh, tons of garbage gets less left over by applying, uh, applying patches. And so we're going to be able to keep all that stuff up to date. So I really see these statistics vary depending on where we're at in the month, but we're doing it pretty frequently that any machine that we've already been taken care of uh, typically don't see anything more than 500 meg because I'm staying on top of it. Now, do you need to do it every night? No, probably not. Maybe you do. Um, a lot of our folks are doing it once a week or once a month. And uh, for I think for most folks, that weekly or monthly schedule more than sufficient. <coughs> so we've done our analysis here. I want to drill in and see what we got going on on Joan Jet. So I'm just going to double click here and see what's going on. And instantly I can see right here, temporary files is the, is the big one. And now if I want to, and I really don't spend a ton of time doing this, I can drill in here and I actually see an app that we're very familiar with, probably got reinstalled, created some temp files that we can flush away now. That's going to save me some disk space. It's going to help me with my performance. I'm just going to go back up, whoops, back up to my top level here. And I'm going to go ahead and initiate the clean command. And this is going to go ahead and do it. Typically, and this is running uh, pretty quick, um, we've upgraded our network cabling and uh, really getting some benefits here from our Cat6 wiring and our 1 gig switch. Uh, I see typically what we've seen is one to two minutes on the scan and then the clean time usually about 40% uh, of that. So on a one minute scan, you're usually looking at about a 20 to 25 second clean. And again, for the most part, I'm not monitoring this. I'm letting this happen overnight. Now, now that my clean is done, th all this stuff has been gone, but if I wanted a chance to review, I can still come back in here and see the information uh, that I would have seen pre-clean. I can see that post-clean now as well. So what I've done, right click, come down to my CCleaner tab, settings, schedule, and here's where I've set, oh, actually got this changed to once a month here. Um, we're going to go ahead and set that back to daily. Probably did that as part of a demo, um, right? So uh, we're going to kick it off. Today is the 22nd, right? Actually, it's the 23rd. So we're going to kick this off at, uh, actually I actually like to go a little bit later than that. So we'll go at about 1144 there. And we're going to run it every day. A lot of different ways that I can set this to run. If you've got a lab environment, maybe you want to do it at, at startup or you might want to do it more frequently. If you want to really be manual about this, um, right, you can schedule this to run individually. So we can do a run once job, have it go off uh, at night. You saw I just ran this on the environment here. Um, pretty much every uh, person who owns these machines is probably sitting at their desk working. They didn't have any idea that anything that anything happened. Um, hey, right? Pete. Now in addition, yeah. Hey, when you're deploying this, um, are you using our traditional Active Directory structure or how are you building out that network structure of servers and workstations? Yeah, so um, we'll connect in with Active Directory. And if you've done a good job, which I haven't, of building groups and really creating a nice directory structure, you can leverage that structure. Um, what we did uh, to bring this in is initially we weren't going to protect servers. And, and keep in mind, folks, we've been doing this now for about four years, right? So we're not, we're not brand new to CCleaner. Um, right, and so we have the full environment uh, protected now, but um, we really started slowly of trying to figure out what does this thing do and how does it operate. So initially, I brought in my machines by doing an IP range. So uh, our uh, workstation range starts at 160 and goes to the end. So we just did 160 to the end. Then we came back in and we wanted to fool around with some virtual servers that we had in our test lab. I have those set from 140 to 150, so I added that range, and then ultimately we came back in and just imported every, every machine. Active Directory is going to bring that whole thing in. Now you can still choose which machines to deploy, so even if you have a machine that you don't want to deploy to, notice hot melts, and it's not that I don't want to deploy to this machine, but we just need to keep it around for a sample. It's got a blue monitor here, so that tells me that it's on. I have a license available for it, but I haven't actually deployed the agent. I'll show you how we do that here shortly. 
um, right? So a couple different ways you can bring those bring those machines in. And if you start with Active Directory and you add a box that maybe for whatever reason isn't a part of the directory structure, you can still bring it in. Or if you bring in a bunch of machines doing the IP method, you can still come back in and connect via Active Directory and find the whole rest of your environment. So a lot of flexibility on using the, the tool that way. Okay? Some other settings that I have here, I can exclude things that I don't want to scan. So maybe I've got a, uh, something that appears to be a bum registry uh, entry, but I, I really need it that way for whatever application fix I had to, you know, I had to jerry rig. So I can exclude stuff there. I can also include a custom path. So an area that CCleaner doesn't natively scan, I can add that in here. So if I've got my own custom app that's thrown off a temp file, I can throw that in there. Maybe I want to whitelist some cookies. Um, so for our uh, frequently visited websites or, or our CRM in the cloud, maybe I want to whitelist that that cookie so it's not getting cleaned out um, every day. And that way people aren't using their, their personal settings. Now, the reason that CCleaner runs so fast, right, is it's scanning the areas for this junk. It's reporting back what junk is in there. And then it's deleting it. And when you delete a file, you're really just pretty simply just deleting the, the pointer or the shortcuts of the file. The file actually still exists on the disk until it gets written over by, by a new file. So if I need to make sure that this data that I'm deleting is actually a little more secure, <coughs> I can actually change how many passes or do a, a multi-pass overwrite of that deleted data to make sure that that data is non-recoverable. Now that's going to slow me down a little bit. So if I'm actually cleaning off 500 meg and I'm actually going to come back and write and delete that 500 megs of disk space three times or seven times or the Gutman 35 times, that's obviously going to add into the add into the clean cycle. But if you're doing a normal file deletion, it's going to be quite rapid. I can also wipe that free space, which allows quicker access uh, to the disk and creates an enhancement. That's going to slow down the clean process, so that might be something that you only want to do at night or uh, uh, you know on the weekend, right? So a lot of different settings that I can do here. Now, in addition to doing my C cleaning, I can do some registry cleaning here, and this is uh, super easy to run. It's again just going to scan for issues. Um, and it's going to pull up uh, any registry errors. And where I typically see registries going astray, patching is, is uh, one of those. If we're uh, doing a rip and replace on uh, maybe our security software, or we're pulling in uh, some kind of new application or getting rid of an application, that's where we tend to see a lot, of, uh, a lot of registry stuff happening. Now I've got a couple of boxes here that have been offline, Soul Coughing and Sinatra and Enrique, and you can see those haven't gotten a registry clean, in, and Weezer, they haven't gotten a registry clean in a long time, so they're really turning out to be bad boys here. Now, just like in my CCleaner, I can double click on this and go through and see what the what is on this stuff. I'm going to go back to my top level, and my cleaning, who's holding me up? Sublime, so we'll let him wrap up. As soon as this is done, I'm going to be able to do fix selected issues, and one of the big questions that we get here is, is this going to initiate uh, a backup of the registry? And is it going to clog up my bandwidth uh, moving these backups over the, over the wire? So the first thing you're going to see is, do I want to backup changes to the registry? Yes, I do. And this is going to actually make a backup of the registry on the local machine. So I'm not going to create any excess uh, network traffic or uh, network bandwidth here um, to get this thing uh, rolling. Now, I've done my cleaning, I've done my registry cleaning, I can come in here and I can disable or enable uh, startup applications and I can do it for the whole group or I can do it for a specific machine. I can uninstall some applications and again for the whole group or a specific machine. If I'm just getting started here, all the machines that I've imported are going to have this blue screen and I can do a couple of different things. If I want to use my uh, uh, GPO to push this out, or I, I would use SCCM or one of these things, I can create an install kit here so that I can push this out using my own tool, or I can push it out right from here. Now, the thing that it's going to pop up here is UAC needs to be disabled for the push. Once it's installed, you can re-enable UAC, uh, and everything's going to run fine. It's going to scan and clean and report back 
just fine, but for the initial deployment, you need to have the UAC off. So once I've got that off and I can do that via a, a group policy, it's just going to pop up a little box here and I can configure how many machines I want to deploy at a time as well as how often do I want these things to check in. So I'm refreshing the host status every 10 seconds, uh, max number of current uh, refreshes, uh, concurrent endpoint agent installs. So 10 at a time you can configure this up or down based on the, the speed and the availability of of your network, right? So a lot of ways you can you can control that. Now as we hop back into our workstations, we've also got the defragler here where I can come in and, and schedule. And this is um, one of the areas where we've gotten a, a nice little bump on performance. Because previously, defrag would always be the last thing that we would try to get a slow machine uh, going again. And because we never did it, it typically would take the whole weekend to get it done and because it took so much time we just never did it right now we can centrally manage it we can schedule it to run um, we keep all of our machines really looking tight and I can drill down into any specific machine and get some more detailed information on where that box is at I can launch and analyze in a defrag here or I can schedule it to, to run so one thing you want to be aware of is if you have machines with solid state drives you don't want to defrag those because the the solid states have a limited number of reads and writes and defrag, uh, defragging those machines unnecessarily shortens the life cycle. So I'm putting my SSD machines in their own group where I won't be running defrag but I'll still be running the regular C cleaning. Okay? So it gives me some uh, starts there. Now I'm not a huge reports guy but if you are you've got some reports down here that you can check out and start finding out, you know, where do I have machines where I don't have an agent installed, uh, for example. And when you click into this, you're always looking at the previous report, and I can go back and see that, or two reports ago, and it tells you when you, when you ran it. And if I want to see the latest information, I'm just going to do run report up here, and it's going to pop that up. So agents requiring an update, looking good. Uh, offline hosts, got some scan and clean reports here. Right. Again, got the latest information. And you can see some of these reports run almost instantly. Some of them take a, a little bit of time to get, the, to get the information. Once I have this report, then I can double click on any one of these machines and go straight to the machine and start remediating or taking action or figuring out what I need to do to get it, to get it back in line. Pretty straightforward product. Pretty easy to get it set up. You know, the management console is going gonna, is gonna to spin up. Um, doesn't really require uh, any kind of big database uh, back end, so it can really install anywhere. We do recommend an always-on machine, especially if you're going to take advantage of the, of the scheduling. But one of the cool things that you can do, if I can click on it, is you can actually make it portable so we can actually export this to a USB drive and then we can carry it around with us so anywhere we're at on the, on the network or even remotely via VPN, we can plug in our portable console and start remediating machines if we're getting a, a, a call for uh, for network slowdown. Um, a lot of folks ask, you know, hey, you know, uh, uh, we find it easy to, you know, to just re-image. Um, if you can re-image a machine uh, and get an end user settings back to where they originally had them faster than you can run uh, a, a C-Clean here, go for it, uh, by, by all means. One of the things that we see, though, is if you ultimately have to end up rebuilding a user's machine, they spend one to two days getting their personal settings, getting their wallpaper, um, basically getting that box looking the way that they had it looking previously. That's a huge waste of time, right? The next thing that we see is uh, guys really just don't care um, until someone's complaining. The challenge that you run into there, and this is more of a business concern probably than an IT concern, is as employees get uh, disgruntled with their with their machine getting slower and slower over time, right? They're complaining and they're complaining about you or complaining about your department and they're starting to complain about their job. I can't do my job because my machine is running slow. This basically eradicates um, a lot of those issues and it keeps new machines running like they're new and it keeps old machines running the way that they ran when they were brand new. So it's a great system. It's not going to make an old machine new, but it is going to breathe new life into it. Um, and it helps you see that, who's getting a bunch of crud built up on their systems. I mean, Exactly. With the investigative tools to figure out if it's their fault or not. 
um, right? Because yeah. as I drill into some of that stuff and I see a lot of patches that I've deployed, I'm not going to blame an end user for that. But if I see yep. a lot of uh, unauthorized applications, maybe someone is going to get a desk drawer filled with sand. Yep. And I don't get the clean sand either. I get it from the playground. I know. <laughs> hey, right, so you so, said uh, if somebody can re-image <coughs> faster than they can run CCleaner, maybe this isn't a good fit for them. Is there anybody else, any other kind of environment where maybe CCleaner is just not a good fit? I really uh, so have talked to some folks who are running uh, uh, like a deep freeze type situation where every night they're rebooting that and, and uh, putting that machine um, back at the end. And so on those machines, right, CCleaner isn't going to make sense. Typically in those environments, though, we see that mostly in schools. Uh, and typically the, the deep freeze is running just on the lab boxes or on the student machines. So what are you going to do for the admin and the faculty uh, staff? Uh, this typically fits in there. Um, you know, a lot of folks don't want to do this on their servers. And we were pretty reluctant, um, really, for about three years before we tried it on the, on the first server, though we're pleased that we did. Um, and so we see a lot of folks going workstation only, um, right? And if you have folks that are really, uh, you know, using their boxes all the time, like most people are, um, I think we don't hear too many folks say, um, this isn't doing anything for us. Or we ran this in the trial and really couldn't find anything to clean. Typically don't, don't hear that. Um, you know, CCleaner isn't the only product available that, that uh, does this kind of stuff. But it is the only product on the market that's actually centrally managed. And uh, it's a great solution that's been around for a long time, um, right? But the ability to actually control it from uh, your workstation across 100 machines or 50 machines or even 10. You can see I've got a pretty small environment here. Still saves me a ton of time from having to visit these machines. And compared to running the built-in Microsoft system tools, you know, it takes probably 10% of the time uh, to do that and I'm able to control it from my desk. I have it on autopilot, so I don't even have to worry about it. That's the ultimate way to go. Yeah, totally. <laughs> all right. That's all I got, Todd. I'm happy to answer more questions if anybody's got them. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my question is, how do you put on such a great presentation? Because this is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, skill and practice, my friend. Ah. Uh, Skill and practice. I'm going to remember Skill that one. Practice. Um, yeah, Pete, can you talk a little bit <coughs> about how CCleaner Network Edition is licensed? Yeah, it's uh, per device, um, right? So you just need to count up the, the total number of, uh, of machines that you've got and uh, one license per device. If you're not going to deploy it on your servers, probably don't need to buy licenses for those. But uh, if you've got any machines where you know it's slow to log on to them, um, you know, remote desktop is slow. Uh, getting them up so you can administer your, your uh, essentially managed apps uh, takes a little bit of time. Check it out. See if it helps. Um, huge yeah. for us. You know, you used to take about two minutes to log into our email server. Ran CCleaner, cleaned off 17 gig of, of data that had built up over the years, and then we were able to log in instantly. Um, did it change my life? No. Made things a little bit easier when I had to go in and troubleshoot or fix something or or just get a stat, or see where we're at on disk space, or set up a mailbox, whatever. Um, is right? there so, hey, is there a limit on the number of uh, administrative accounts you can set up with uh, CCleaner? Uh, so as far as people who can log in and actually do something? Yeah, the number of administrators, yeah. Yep, one. OK, and yeah, so you'd not, have to share that. No you can't based. set up You can't set yeah. up a tree, or? Nope, nope, no role-based administration. Um, you can password protect it. I actually don't have ours password protected. So the way we control it is whoever can log on to the, to the workstation that it's on can run it. We don't grant access to, to everybody to do that. I can password the, the, uh, uh, the console, um, but it's one password that needs to be shared. What we find, though, for a lot of the folks that we work with is on systems like this, they typically just have one one shared admin and password account. So I think that works for a lot of folks. But no role-based provisioning like what you'd see in a, in a Sophos or a Kaspersky to let different yep. folks do different things. Yep. <laughs> no, that's great. So um, yeah, so nice segue. Um, wanted to end briefly with software we love. Um, we got some great bundles going on with CCleaner and Sophos uh, as well as 
Kaspersky, we think uh, these in tandem can really help you with a high-performing, secure environment. So talk to your account exec when they uh, follow up with you today. Um, and thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, you took a half hour out of your life to spend with us, and I say thank you. I know you have a lot of things going on, so hopefully this was uh, worth your time, and uh, let us know if it was, and if, you, if we missed the mark, please let us know, because we put these on for your benefit. Pete, thank you very much for a fantastic presentation, and everybody else, I wish you a fantastic balance of your day and week and get out and enjoy that summer. I'm Todd Obert from Productive along with Pete Greco signing off. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks everybody.